This video is going to cover the topic of line plots, how we use line plots, and how we make line plots. But remember, before we get started, we need to set up our page for notes. To do that, you're going to use your class bookmark as a ruler. So use the bookmark to first make a horizontal line across the top. Then go ahead and turn it 90 degrees to make a vertical line along the left-hand side. From there, we need to put our header at the top, which will include our date and topic. You can see I've left the spot for the date blank. Go ahead and fill in today's date. And I have marked that the topic is line plots. Next, we're going to put our essential question that will guide our learning. The essential question for this video is how can we use line plots to display data? The goal is that by the end of this video, you'll know how to create a line plot, how to take data and turn it into a line plot. Remember also that we are going to use this big empty space down here to write notes. Right? So you'll write down what I have on the screen. You can also add anything that might help you. And then the left hand side will stay empty and open, but you can write down any questions that you might have as you're watching it. Just jot it down and bring it to class tomorrow. Line plots are used in statistics and with numerical data. As you can probably tell from the name, numerical data is data that involves numbers. So when we think about our survey questions that we're doing in class, we're thinking about questions that can be answered with a variety of numbers, like 8 or 12 or 0. An example of a numerical question that has numerical data might be, how many pets do you have? If I ask that question, a student might say two, or someone might say five. Right? All of the answers would be numbers. The opposite of numerical data would be categorical data. Categorical data is collected when you ask questions that aren't answered with numbers, but rather with a category. Makes sense, categorical data. You might be able to think of an example right off the top of your head already, right? But if I ask you what your favorite color is, you probably wouldn't say four or 10. Instead, you would pick a category. You would say blue or green, right? So that would be an example of a categorical question that would have categorical data. Now if we have numerical data, we can use that to create a line plot, which is what we're focusing on today. So here, for space reasons, I'm going to turn my page. You can keep going on on the same page, since you probably still have room left. So when we collect numerical data, we can create a line plot with the information. And when we create a line plot, we display it on a number line. How we start the number line depends on the data that we have collected. So if I ask how many pets you have and the lowest number I get is 2, I could start my number line with the number 2. As I work to set up my number line, let me assume that in this survey the highest answer was 8. My number line has to go from 2 to 8. When I make this number line, one important thing is that I have to be consistent when I put my numbers down. So here you can see I decided to count by ones. I just went up one every time and I was consistent in that. I didn't skip count some of the time and count by ones the other time. We always have to be consistent and I'm going to put that on the side. We call this having a consistent or constant scale. That being said, I don't have to count by ones as long as I'm consistent. Maybe I have data that starts at 1, but I need to count by the fraction halves. I need to go up by half every time. That's okay. It might look like this, right? And remember, of course, that you're writing all of this down in your notebook. Um, but no matter what my scale is, I was consistent again, right? So I went up by halves, and I was consistent and steady the whole time. My scale is a little different. Right? but it's still consistent. So now we're going to go ahead and use a data set to create a line plot. 
I'm going to imagine that I've asked a question of how many siblings the students in our class have. And if I ask that question, I find out that the smallest number is zero and the largest number is seven, I can use that to set up my number line. In this case, the range or the difference between the highest and the lowest numbers is not very large, so I'm going to go ahead and count by ones as I set up my scale. Once I have the number line, there are a couple other things that I need to make a line plot complete, one of which is a title, right? something that we call our graph, and I'm just going to use the question or reframe the question as my title. The next thing I need to do is label my graph, and a lot of students forget to label the graph, but it really is important to be able to tell your audience what it is they're looking at. So I'm going to label this below the line, and it tells us what we are measuring and what these numbers represent. Right? In this case, the number represents the number of siblings. So if someone looks at my data, they know that this two here doesn't mean two elephants or two cookies. It means two brothers or two sisters or two siblings. The last thing that we need is a symbol to represent our data, and I'm going to use X's. I use X's most of the time. So let's just say that one, no, two people said they had zero siblings. There were three people who said they had one. One person had two siblings. No one had three or four, so those are left blank. One person had five. No one had six. And let's just imagine that four people said they had seven siblings. Just be careful when you're using your symbol that you're careful with the placement of the X. We don't want to have one X be taller than the other, right? Significantly taller. We want it to take up the same amount of space and be the same size. And that's it. You need to have a title, a label, a consistent number line, and something that represents the data, a symbol. The last thing we're going to do here is just look at two more examples. And one is actually an example, and one is a non-example. I like to show errors that students make as a way to prevent other students from making the same mistakes. So I'm going to give you some data that I've made up here about the number of books students read over the summer. So we'll imagine in my survey that there were some people who read five books, and when I surveyed there were four people who said they read five books. There were two people who said they read seven, and eight people, oh, excuse me, eight books were read by three people. So as we set up the number line, I see something happening a lot with students, and I want you to just look at this first and tell me what it is that I've done wrong. Do you notice the mistake that the students are making that I've made here? Hopefully you can see that the student, or in this case, I, was not consistent, right? I skipped from five up to seven, going up by two, but then I only up, went up by one here. I cannot do that, right? That is not consistent. So what should it look like? I'd like you to pause the video, take a moment, and in your journal, redraw the number line as I should have done it, and fill in the information. When you're done, unpause the video and see how you did. How'd you do? Does your line plot look like mine? If so, that's a great start. But now we need to add in the missing pieces still. So I still need to make sure that I have a title and that I have a label. Right? Because clearly we have a nice consistent number line. So those two pieces are missing. I'm going to go ahead and add those in. Make sure you add it as well. And there it is, right? We have a complete line plot here. It has a consistent scale, right? Even though I don't have anyone who read six books, I still have it on my number line. I just represented it without any symbols to show that nobody fell in that group. I have a title and I have labels. So our essential question was how do we create a number line or how do we use data to construct a number line? Um, if you have other questions about this, be sure to write them down in the margin and we'll talk about it more in class.